Good day, YouTubers. I've got a few of these Dwarven fiber optic lighting systems on the layout. This is one of them, and, and I featured them in a prior video. They're street lamps on the road that leads into the province of Worcester Regional Office. And then down at this end in the CSX yard, I have Dwarven fiber optics that are running that signal light. There's a Iowa Scaled Engineering train sensor that detects when there's cars in the building and it turns the light red and then when they come out it turns the light green that's that light is scratch built but it's being it's being lit by fiber optics underneath the layout and then also the lighting inside the building so there's some details on the inside that's fiber optics so it gives a nice it's hard to see it now because it's bright daylight and the sun's coming through the garage window here but there is lighting in that building done with fiber optics. So the next thing I want to do using this Dwarven fiber optic system is put in these dwarf signals. So you can see there's two fiber optics going into each signal. One for red, one for green. Comes in a pair. And I want that to go here um, for this turnout that goes to the main or off to the siding, which I currently have hooked up to a blue point switch machine so the circuit that drives these fascia lights will also drive these red and green so there'll be one as you're approaching the turnout from this direction and one as you're approaching from this direction and the circuit that they have for this is is or what I'm what I'm going to use and I'll explain why and how this is actually their block detector or railroad crossing a circuit could be used for either by putting jumpers on it. So you you use an Iowa scale engineering infrared sensor. That's what they that's a, that's what these come with, um, and that detects the train. And if it's set for running a signal, it'll it'll light up one of the two LEDs that drive the fiber optics. So if it's a red green signal. For example, it, you cover that signal, the, the one side will go that drives the red. If you unblock the signal, it'll flip over to green. It'll light the other LED. And you could put either color into either slot. And I think each slot takes two, if I'm not mistaken, two, maybe three fiber optics. So it's good for a, a crossing signal um, where if it's blocked, you want it on. Um, not so much a block signal because with a block you want to cross it and then it stays red until you cross over it again. In this case, it has to be covered with using this particular unit. And where it, where it worked for me uh, on this layout is over here where um, I showed you earlier in this manufacturing plant facility. Um, if the cars are out of there and there's a time delay for it to go to green, it goes to green. As you're backing in, you'll know when you're in far enough so you don't hit the, the back. It gives you a little more room to go. It'll turn red because it's covering up that Iowa Scaled Engineering, Iowa Scaled Engineering photo sensor uh, or infrared sensor. And this is the, the box that I had in my hand. So you can see that there's an LED that drives the fiber optic for the red, which is on now, and then one for the green. So when you uncover that infrared detector, it'll it'll go from the red to the green. So what I'm going to do over here, though, because I want it to be driven by this switch machine, which basically it has a double pull, double throw switch on it and that's the blue point switch machine that i showed in, a, in an earlier video and if you're aligned to the main it's green if you align to diverge into the siding it goes red and just using that same circuit i want to make these go green and red so what i've done is um i'm not sure trains would approve of this uh, would certainly ruin your warranty, but I, I got I got this with the other one that I showed you on the manufacturing plant 
and this one was bad. It was just a bad connection in the um, in where the plug goes in. So there's a power supply that goes in there. I haven't had any problems with their products. This one just happened to be bad luck. It, it was bad. So I decided um, they replaced it immediately when I when they said it was bad. So good service for sure. And so what I decided to do is I don't like to waste anything. Is go in here and you'll you'll see how this works now. There's there's small but very bright LEDs, and that's what drives the light through the fiber optics. And it's got this little piece here that sits on top of the LEDs, and that basically is where you insert the fiber optics, one for the red and one for the green. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hijack this circuit board because I just need the LEDs. They're going to be driven off of the double pole, double throw switch that's on that blue point switch machine. So I don't need all the electronics, but the LEDs are there already and the structure of this box allows me to insert the fiber optics for those two signals. So here's what I've done to make this work. I just use these inputs, which are normally used for the train sensor, the infrared sensor. Um, I'm gonna have them just feed power in to the LEDs from that double pole, double throw switch that's on the blue point turnout. So I've, I've made some jumps here on the circuit board. I don't need any of these um, electronics. So I've got the red feeding into the positive side of the LEDs. And in this case, they have the positives going through resistors, um, feeding both of the LEDs. And then <clears throat> the, com the negatives I have going one, one will uh, power the LED for the red and one for the green. The colors of these wires don't necessarily match that. That's what I had. So red, I just want to make sure red represented positive so I knew what that is. And then the other two are negatives. And it, it doesn't matter because you, you can make either one red and either one green. So um, basically, I'm just lifting the circuit, the LEDs circuits for those LEDs. And to do that, I had to make some cuts um, to break some of the other connections because it was doing some weird things because it was feeding into the, um, the the chips. So you can see there's some cuts in the, in the board just to break the circuits. So really the only thing that's happening here is positive power is going to the LEDs and then negative power each one has its own line, and that's what's going to make it toggle between red and green, depending on which way that switch point is set using the double pull, double throw switch, if that makes sense. So a, a good example of how you can take what would otherwise be scrap and actually use it. So um, I'll put this thing back together. It's wired as far as the internal guts are concerned and um, once you put that cover on there and it stabilizes these inputs and then I'm going to put it under the layout and I'm just going to wire this to the double pole double throw switch on the blue point and then it's going to feed into these two signals and it should work just by pulling this lever here just like these LEDs change so yeah they do have um, trains does have a a unit that is smaller than this that is meant to be hooked up to a switch machine so that you can do what I'm doing here. Um, but again, I'm doing this because I had this circuit board laying around, so not recommended, but just a, I thought you'd find it interesting of how you can take something that um, doesn't work and use it for something else where it does work. So let's get this thing hooked up and I'll show it to you. These are the dwarf signals. So they're plastic bodies, flat, flat back, uh, black, and you can see the lenses, green and red. And then they give you a generous amount of fiber optics, so you can just cut that to length. All right, so it's all hooked up. I've wired the, um, the power off that blue point switch, and you can see that all the tangle of other wires you can see that LED driven 
fiber optic box. There's two fiber optics coming out of each side. Red and green for each of the lights. And if we come up here, <clears throat> as I move that turn out, now it's aligned to the main, now it's diverging to the siding. And these correspond to what I do with that switch. So you get red, green, and on this side, even though this is kind of hard to see, just for authenticity, I thought I'd have one on both sides of the, of the turnout. Line for the siding, the line for the main. And it's a, it's a nice bright light, honestly, for um, fiber optics. You get pretty good brightness coming through. That's what it looks like. So, that is a simple idea. Obviously, if you're going to do this, I'd recommend just getting their module that is driven off the uh, switch machine. But I had an opportunity to use that extra electronic board, and it works. Hope that was interesting. Hope it was useful. Have a good day.